Hello and welcome to another episode of Crypto Corner with myself, OJ, crypto analyst and investor since 2016. Now, today we're going to look at the charts. It's been a while that uh, we, we've done a technical analysis here on the channel. And I know that you guys are wondering what's happening with Bitcoin. Are we going down? Are we going up now? Is it going to go to 10,000? Everyone is talking about 10, 12,000 again. Guys, I don't think this is happening. You know my stance. I am st still maintain my conviction that we are not going to 15,000 or below 15,000 anymore. I feel that the bottom was uh, back here in uh, November last year. Uh, as you can see, we hit uh, just under 16,000, around 16,000. This for me was the bottom of this market. Now, what's happening here in the shorter term, let's go on the eight hour chart. And then after that, we're going to go into the longer time frames. But with the eight hour chart, we are still seeing in the shorter term a potential to go lower and to go into that orange area here, which will be ideal buy zone for me. Um, we are below our trend line. We broke below our trend line. This is a trend line that we were forming all the way since August, since 17th of August and we tested it a few times we finally managed to break it just a, a day ago we managed to break below it we are currently just below 26,000 very close to 26,000 we could actually find the strength to climb above this trend line and continue following it as a support but for the moment for the time being yesterday we broke this support line and now we are actually finding a resistance where previously we were using this trend line as a support right now this is a resistance as you can see today we tried to climb above it it was a very weak attempt it was just a week of a candle and uh, and we are still below that so until we climb back above this trend line and that means we need to go above 25,800, 25,900, which is really not that far from where we are. But until we climb above this price and reclaim this support trend line, we are actually going downwards. So this is why I'm saying we still have a chance of going lower and uh, perhaps even going into this 24 region, which will be ideal buy zone for me but it is not a guaranteed that we will do that and if we look on the macro let's go on the three day and then we're going to go on the weekly you can see here that we have another trend line that is quite far from where we are and i told you in my previous analysis this is the trend line that i really care about for me unless we break this trend line which is currently crossing at around 23500 or you know lower 24000 up until that moment, we are still continuing our rally on the upside. Yes, we are doing corrections, you know, quite a few of them, but we are still continuing to print higher highs and higher lows compared to previous lows. Even with this drop, we still have not gone below our previous low. Our previous low is sitting at 24,700. Even with this drop right now, we still have not broken. We haven't gone below that low. We have not turned the trend is what I'm saying. So the macro is still looking bullish. Now, I do expect that we could see a similar performance. I've said that many times back in April. I said it a similar performance to what we did in 2019, where we did have a rally in the beginning of the year. And towards the summer, we reached a peak and we, we hit a resistance. And after that, we stayed down below that resistance for the rest of the year. So our resistance was here in the 30,000s, 31,000, 32,000 was really the resistance that we never managed to break above. From that point, we are now doing a correction and we are trading below that price. We could do that for the rest of the year. We could actually continue going downwards and we can steadily go downwards and really go into the 22,000s and even 20,000s. I can expect this kind of uh, performance. But I'm not really expecting anything below 20,000 guys. This is really for me for the rest of the year. We could, this is the bearish case scenario is that we just continue going downwards here. And you know, we go to 22 K, we break that support and we come all the way here to the 20,000, which is another support. We have already established this as a support and I'm not seeing any reason for this support not to hold us. Now, there is another scenario here that is also not the most bullish one. We could, in fact, from here, let's say that we just printed a local bottom here. 
we could actually see a move on the upside, maybe even a break above this uh, 30,000 resistance, which I don't really see that happening very easily, but it's possible that we actually go here and we break above this resistance and we shoot all the way to the 40,000, which is what I was expecting for us to do already with this previous momentum that we were building. It was quite a strong momentum. We had some very fast moves on the upside and that gave me the confidence that we are actually heading towards the 40K. I thought that, you know, after a couple of challenges of the 30,000, we're going to manage to break this uh, resistance level and then start going towards the 40,000. This is still a possibility, even though less likely right now, because many people are shaken, you know, the confidence of the bulls is shaken and people, even on the upside, people are not going to be rushing with the same speed, you know, with the same volumes as well as we saw here back in January and then later in April as well. You know, we have lost this momentum, so this will be a, I'm not expecting a very strong green candle on the upside just yet, but going into next year we could actually see a bit of a rally towards the end of this year then of course we can see another correction it could actually be even a deeper correction than the one i drew but after that very soon after that we're going to be approaching the next halving and there's uh, in march we are expecting another ETF application to be reviewed and this time BlackRock of course this time most likely to get approved and should that happen I'm expecting a rally on the upside and this is when I'm expecting that we will finally leave the 30,000 resistance behind us and we're going to start heading towards the 40,000 resistance and then we'll see how we go after that. I'm expecting that with the next halving, it's not going to be in immediate effect. It never is. You know, usually after the halving, you know, things cool out and, you know, the hype and everything that was built starts subsiding. So we can expect another drop, maybe even a deeper correction after the halving. And then for another few months, we can expect that we can be going sideways or at least going moving within a tight range. And then after that, usually six months after the halving, we are starting to see the bigger moves, the more bold moves that are, you know, starting to go up and up and up and doesn't really correct for a long time. However, there are some altcoins that I am also watching tightly and uh, and I will be jumping in some of this. For the short term at least, one of them is Optimism. OP is the token. It is traded on Binance and quite a few other exchanges. This is a layer two solution for Ethereum that is designed to provide lightning fast transactions. And of course, at the fraction of the cost of the Ethereum network. So it aims to drive the vision of Ethereum towards achieving decentralization through transparent and sustainable blockchain. I like that. The OP token is used to govern the Optimism network and uh, it is quite a hot token actually. It did uh, quite some good moves earlier in the year. So it's definitely on my watch list and I recommend that you place it also on your watch list. The total supply of the token is 4.29 billion tokens. Circulating supply right now just over 200 million. So not a very big supply. This is why I like it actually. The market cap is $286 million, making it in the top 100, which I quite like that as well. It's important to know that if you are going to be trading this token, don't really take it as a uh, long-term investment because for me, at least for me, this is a short-term kind of a swing trading type of a token. It was distributed already through two uh, airdrops and there is a third coming as well. The community is awaiting the third one, but we don't really know the date yet. Uh, the last one was, I think, in the beginning of this year. So the third one could be early next year but we don't have a date so if you are going to trade the token you have to stay on top of the news you have to monitor and find out when is going to be that third drop because as more supply hits the market you know what's going to happen it's going to have a drop in the price at least temporary in the short term but as a trader you need to know these things so that you know what to expect and hopefully you're not going to be holding that token uh, you know prior to that close to the date of that third uh, airdrop because many people will be dumping the tokens and the price will drop. This could be a good accumulation point though, depending on when it's going to be. But I'm not going to wait until then because I do like the, the chart of optimism of OP. Let's take a look at the chart here. 
this is a token that i was trading already a few times throughout the year i did exit all of my positions when we were starting to drop at around 155 or whatever it was i managed to get rid of it just be before we made this dump here because of course as bitcoin is dropping and i'm monitoring bitcoin all the time i saw that bitcoin is dropping and that meant the whole market is going to drop because it was quite a significant drop in bitcoin as well so i exited anyways what I'm saying is that right now here, we are forming somewhat of a bottom and I'm liking, uh, especially if we go on the higher time frames, we are going to see that on the daily stochastic RSI is already giving me this bullish cross here and it is in the oversold region, right? So this to me looks like early signs of a recovery starting, which is not something that I'm seeing in all of the other coins. I mean, this is one of the few tokens that right now is actually looking a little more bullish than many of the other ones. That's why it's I'm watching it closely. I want to see what will be the price action over the next few days, and I will probably jump back in, at least for a short term swing trade. You know, just jump back in here. Maybe we're going to go to the 50th moving average, which is going to be a rejection. It, it is a resistance right now. So because we are under the 50th moving average, I'm not looking at this in the long term or as an investment. I'm looking at this purely speculatively just to trade, you know, take advantage of the market swings. So we are quite low here in the stochastic RSI and the market is are also on the low end. So this is really giving me more confidence that I'm expecting from very soon to see from here a push on the upside. And this is why I'm ready to jump in and take a small trade here, you know, a small upside move, perhaps something like 5%, maybe, you know, 10% if I'm lucky. So this is really the move that I'm looking here for optimism in the short term. Now, another token that I'm watching right now, and this is only on my watch list. I haven't actually bought any of this. I'm still waiting for it. This is Cyber. This is the token of Cyber Connect, a Web3 social network that enables developers to create social applications. The project has already raised $25 million from two rounds after being listed by Binance Launchpool. This is what I like about it. It is traded on Binance. It was launched by Binance. Users were able to stake their BNB and some stable coins like TUSD into separate pools to farm these tokens over 30 days back in August. And Binance listed Cyber for trading on the 15th of August this year. The total token supply of Cyber is 100 million Cyber tokens and the launch pool token rewards are 3 million Cyber tokens. So that's only 3% of the total token supply. CyberConnect's mission and vision are centered around building a decentralized social graph protocol, a decentralized social network that allows users to own their digital identity, content, connections and monetization channels. So this is a good project. It's working in the Web3 space. This is what I like about it. Now, why I'm waiting for it and why I'm just watching it right now, I'm not really buying yet. I'm expecting that I like this chart. I like, you know, how it's done quite a significant pump in the beginning. Now it's doing a big retracement here, a big correction, which is what I like about it because I didn't jump into this project at pre-launch. So now I'm waiting for it to retrace properly. I'm expecting that it will come here into my orange area. This is basically the area of support. It's a possible support. It's not yet been tested. So we are yet to test this. It was previously a resistance zone, right? So after we broke above this resistance, we haven't actually tested that. So we don't really know whether this support will hold here, but most likely that previous resistance is going to act as a support. So once we come here into this orange area, this is what I'm waiting for. I will see how we behave because it really depends on whether we're going to see some volume jumping in, you know, whether it's going to be a big dump or is it going to just continue retracing slowly but surely into this area. This is what I want to see. I want to see what the price action will be at the same time. I might not really be that lucky because I see that stochastic RSI is already in the oversold region, severely oversold here. It's printing a bullish cross. So it's very likely that we're going to see some upwards price action first. 
and if that coincides with a bullish price action in Bitcoin and the rest of the market, then it could just be bouncing from here and this could be the, the local bottom here. It, I'm not guaranteed that I will get it to come down into my ideal buy zone. But this is really my ideal buy zone. And even then, even if we come into my ideal buy zone, I'm still not certain that I will be buying straight away. I want to see what the price action will be. And I want to see what indicators will be showing me. So far, we're having price going down and volume going down. So this is bearish. This is not really making me confident right now to be jumping in and buying it. Also, we are below the 50th moving average here on the 8-hour chart. On the daily, we don't really have that much data to see the 50th moving average. And even on the 12-hour chart, we don't really have a 50th moving average yet. But for me, I want to see us climb above the 50th moving average. Only then I'm interested. And I'm going to 8-hour chart because we don't really get that data on the 12th or the daily. It's a new coin, so we don't really have that much history yet. Even on the 1-hour chart though, we are below the 50th moving average. But of course, this is the short term. I don't really care that much for the short term. This is why I'm looking at at least 8-hour and 12-hour charts. And what I want to see is some volume kicking in because so far I'm seeing a lot of selling volume and I'm not seeing enough buying volume. This is because we pumped quite significantly. I mean, this coin made in just a few days, it made, what is it, 330% uh, gains. It went all the way to $16 from $3. So, and this was not really the bottom of it. I'm looking here at just that pump, right? Once it bottoms out and it shows me that it's turning the trend, I'm looking to see signs of turning the trend. Only then I will jump in. But overall, I like this chart. I've seen many charts like this in new coins where you see that initial pump, you know, a lot of accumulation happening here, a lot of hype surrounding the token. That means that it is a hot token. And then we are not seeing an immediate dump though. This is not a pump and dump. Even if we go on the daily chart, you can see that this did not happen over just uh, a few hours or something like that. So this was not an artificial pump and dump, but definitely it was driven by a lot of hype and a lot of news. Maybe something happened that people just found out about the token and they started trading it more hectically. So now that it's retracing, it's uh, doing this uh, very natural correction of over 40%. I would expect it to retrace at least by 60-70%. Actually, we're already by 60%. So as we come to around 68-70%, this is what I'm expecting will exhaust this correction. And from that point on, we can look at a turning of the trend. And this is where I'm going to be jumping in. One of the sources that I use a lot in my market analysis and research is Token Metrics, a website that is rich in tools and analytics. If you want to know when it's the right time to enter a position on any coin or token, and more importantly, when to exit, because this is really the difficult part, there are loads of metrics here to help you with that. This is one of their AI tools that helps me analyze the market better and spot the right entry or exit points. As you can see, it gives you a green signal when the market turns bullish, meaning we're in an uptrend, and the red signals indicate when the market has turned bearish, thus exiting positions and preventing losses becomes really easy with this tool. There are so many tools that you can use. Here is another one, the out-season Bitcoin season indicator that gives me a very good idea if it's time to diversify into outs or should my focus be on Bitcoin instead. There is no need to be a backholder during a bear market. I think by now this much is clear. And with this tool, it's a no-brainer. They provide in-depth data and stats on all cryptocurrencies and a lot of new upcoming projects, launches and token sales. This is where I find unknown gems before they hit the mainstream. Their emails offer a detailed breakdown on technicals and fundamentals on new projects and their expertise in this field is second to none. With token metrics, you can really advance your analysis and improve your investment strategies. I've been a premium member of token metrics for the past two years and I'm using it on a daily basis. You get a 10% discount with my link, so go check it out from the description below or by scanning this QR code. All right, well, this is everything for today, guys. Thanks for staying until the end. I hope this technical analysis is helping. Let me know in the comments if this is helpful or if you have any suggestions or any questions. 
let me know in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like, show your support for this channel. This really helps to get the algorithms going so that we can get more visibility on these videos. And if there's any other tokens that you want me to analyze, or you know tokens that you're investing in and you're wondering what's going to happen let me know i will have a look and i will let you know also i just recorded an interview with a really cool guy an og in crypto who is developing a special project uh, a project that we talked about over a year ago and uh, we just revisited it now it's a stable coin that is decentralized that is not issued by a central authority is what I'm saying. And this makes it a really cool project for me. So definitely make sure to catch the next episode of Crypto Corner. I'm going to talk all about it with the guy Joshua. So this is coming in the next episode yet again. Thanks for staying until the end of the video. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below where I drop the links to all of the crypto services that I'm personally using and that I recommend to you. And while you're here, just pick another one of my videos and I'm going to see you there.